Thank you, Kelly. So let's fast forward three months, four months. And the headline, the Supreme Court rules <coughs> Obamacare unconstitutional. Now what? <laughs> you know, but it's easy to be against things, and certainly this is a valid piece of legislation to be against. It's a little harder to be for things, because we can always find something that all of us would disagree in a bill that's 2,700 pages, including the Tenth Amendment, you know, <laughs> kind of overreach there. But what does happen? Is Georgia ready when the bill is unconstitutional? Well, the reality is that Georgia has got major insurance problems already. We have over 1.8 million people in this state who are uninsured. If you work for a small employer, your chances of being insured are only about 25%. Our insurance system is not working. In the state of Georgia, we have 9.6 million citizens in the entire state. The number of people who are controlled by state insurance laws are not the people at Coca-Cola or Delta or UPS. They're covered under another federal law called ERISA which exempts them from anything the state can do. So there's nothing the state legislature can do to affect those self-insured plans. It is only plans that are referred to as fully insured, where the insurance company is at risk, where the employer or the individual is paying their dime and getting their coverage. Whether their claims are high or low, the insurance company is the at-risk party. In the state of Georgia, we have 1.8 million uninsured, as I said. Under the state laws currently for insurance, we only cover 2.2 million lives that we can even affect with any kind of state law. So what do we do? Well, one of my missions in life is to solve the uninsured problem with free market solutions. And what I can say is that Kelly and the Georgia Public Policy Foundation has prepared for that eventuality of that headline that I mentioned. We've actually been working together for over four years. We got some legislation in 2008 that would improve the marketplace for insurance policies, both individual and small group plans. But then, of course, the attention got shifted to Washington. So last summer, back around oh, May or June, we started to get together a group of stakeholders. And we've touched base with all of them. We've touched base and have support from the physician groups, both MAG and Doctors for Patient Care. We've talked to the, hosp the hospital associations, the agents, the insurance companies, uh, we talked to um, uh, various groups out there, even people who wouldn't want the state to do anything. They don't want to talk about it because they want the federal government to do it. I wanted to talk to everybody so we get all the ideas in, from both opponents of any kind of state reforms as well as those who wanted more free market solutions. We set up several basic principles to start with. We said, first of all, the goals were to have free market solutions expand on personal responsibility in the purchase and use of health care services, create more competition, more choice, transparency, and create a level playing field. And there are three major areas, and there's not enough time in the five or ten minutes to try to present all the details there, but there are three major areas of reforms that we came up with. The first is to reform the marketplace, the basic principles of the marketplace. And that sounds pretty ominous to try to do that. But we actually have four big ideas that can do that. Because Georgia, while we have one nice large company, and maybe you're represented here, they control 60 to 75 percent of the individual market and 50 to 60 percent of that small group market. I contend that McDonald's needs a Burger King, and now Wendy's I saw the other day is now number two over a Burger King, and Coke needs Pepsi. We need more competition from even if we just have a few big players, but I think we can create competition to create more smaller players that can really change the marketplace. We actually have ideas to do there, and I'd be glad to go over that with anybody. So that's the first big area. The second is to reform the free market safety net. And I'll give you a quick example there. If you have insurance and you've lost your job, and an awful lot of people have done that these days, if you work for a group that's 20 lives or more, while it's expensive, we have some ideas on how to make it less expensive. You can continue that coverage under something that's referred to as COBRA. And you get 18 months. But if you're in a group of 19 lives or less, Georgia law applies. And under Georgia law, you only get to continue your coverage for three months. 
Why should that be different? We want to equalize that. Let's allow people who lose their job to have the same rights as somebody in a larger group. And there's a whole lot of other ideas under that reforming the free market system, the safety net that should be out there. It's clear that the existing laws were written by insurance company lawyers and not for the benefit of the consumer. The third big area is actually sort of the big elephant in the room that's always a problem anytime you talk about health care reform. And that's how do you actually lower the cost. We have a whole series of ideas on how we actually can lower the cost. Kelly alluded to a few of those. Let me just mention a couple to wrap up my part and then if there's any time for questions, glad to take questions. Defined contribution plans. Everybody talks about that. It's almost a Republican mantra bumper sticker out there. Well, how's that work and what does that really mean? Well, if I work for a small employer who can't afford insurance, they might want to be willing to give me something to buy insurance. And if I work for multiple employers, I've got several part-time jobs, I'd like each of them to be able to contribute some money so that I'd have enough to buy insurance. Under Georgia law, it's very difficult to do. Because if an employer puts up some money, and there's actually tax advantage ways to do that under something called a health reimbursement arrangement, so they don't have to use after-tax dollars. If an employer says, I'll actually help my employees do that by collecting the money and submitting it to a carrier who's willing to write all these individual policies with the subsidy that I'll provide, <coughs> that's called list billing. Well, insurance companies won't do that because of Georgia law, the act of putting together all that, the employer working to facilitate that, in some legal minds, creates a group insurance policy, even though the end product is an individual policy which creates a guaranteed issue under Georgia law. So there's, there's problems there that we can correct. But let's talk about actually reducing costs under this, one of the biggest areas, and there's a lot of them. If I work for a UPS and I'm doing the right things, I'm keeping my blood pressure, my cholesterol, uh, I'm a non-smoker, um, my waist size, my, my body mass index, I keep all those things in line, I can actually be rewarded and incentivized, reinforced to do the right things to keep my health care costs down. And the federal government, the Department of Labor, actually has some guidelines around using health status as an ability to lower your costs, whether it's lowering your premiums, whether it's doing sort of the vanishing deductible. How many have seen that advertisement on the, for your cars? I guess they have this big rock over your head that shrinks. You can do that in a large employer for health insurance, but it's illegal for small business. It's illegal. Why? Because we have something called rebate laws that apply to small groups that don't apply to big groups. How much is that worth? Up to 20% can be rewarded and incentivized to reinforce good behaviors. Small groups with individuals doing the right thing, taking personal responsibility, could actually have their premiums lowered by as much as 20% just from that one item. The income tax, giving an exemption for individual policies. We can't change the federal law and get the federal tax, but in Georgia, basically, we have a flat 6%. That would lower premiums by 6% as a net cost. So as Kelly's saying, if you want to talk about tax reform, one of the best ways you can do tax reform is do health insurance reform. That would free up a lot of money. And big business. Health care is big business in Georgia. I think all but about five counties have at least 100 people working in the health care industry. And many of them have more than 5,000. If we can improve health insurance costs, we wouldn't have 1.8 million. In fact, the whole program, the whole package that we put together, it's already in legislative language. We actually got got some of it submitted in this legislative session, but everybody's waiting for the, the court decision. So I think we're really well prepared. We actually have the legislation in place. We're ready to go, we're ready to engage as soon as that headline comes out. And the Georgia Public Policy Foundation and the support of Kelly has really made it possible for us to be prepared for that eventuality. I don't think many other states are, are, are at that point, but we are, we're ready to go. One of the biggest areas that we've been working on that uh, has been on the list of the Georgia Public Policy Foundation for a long time, and many of you, is establishing a high risk pool for people who are uninsurable. Because we're not going to have a mandate, in the, and it's going to be a system. We want to get as many people in. We think we can actually reach about a million to 1.2 million of the 1.8 million uninsured and get them free market coverage that's affordable with this package. So I hope we can talk about that more uh, through, the, through the months ahead as we're preparing for next year. It's hard to think about next year when the session is just wrapping up now, but you know there is a the old philosophy of just cheerful persistence. So while you get frustrated that you can't get everything you want today, um, you have to stay on. It's a long-term process, and uh, and I really appreciate the support and the help from the Georgia Public Policy Foundation to 
you stay on that long road sometimes that it takes to actually make a major change. So I'll be glad to answer any questions and thank you for your listening.